Finding Family in New Zealand. We start with births, deaths and marriages and civil registration, which commenced in New Zealand in 1848 for births and deaths and 1856 for marriages. They can be found online for the historical ones at www.dia.gov.nz. But we also have microfiche indexes through to 1990. And Ancestry has published some of these within the historical times. So on the historical BDMs, what is available? Births that occurred 100 years ago, stillbirths that occurred 50 years ago, marriages that occurred 80 years ago, deaths that occurred 50 years ago, or where the death is of a person born more than 80 years ago, then you will find that death index. So what can you find from these? For births online, you can find the full name, the names of the parents, although there are some exceptions. And if you use the microfiche indexes and the district keys, which have been produced by the New Zealand Society of Genealogists, you may be able to find the district. So this first slide shows us the Department of Internal Affairs, which hosts the births, deaths and marriages online indexes. If you click on Trace Your Family History on BDM Online, it will eventually bring you to this page, which goes over the same things that I told you about the information that's available. Down on the left hand side, there are a whole lot of information panels which will give you lots more so that you can complete your family history. But we will start first of all with a search. And I want to introduce you to my Alabaster family. They have provided me with some really great examples and so I'm trying to stick to that family alone. So we click onto the search, which will open up the panel, which we'll click on, and we'll click onto the births. We need to enter at least one surname and a date. So for Alabasters, I'm just putting in Alabaster in the family name and a search from date, I'm going from the first of the 1st, 1848, which was when civil registration started. And I clicked Submit Search. This brought me up a screen which has 15 matches. And this is in no particular order. But if you note, the tops, the, oh, the pages, have got underlines, so that indicates that you can actually sort them. So this next screen, I have sorted according to the father's given name. And the one that I am interested in, or as belongs to my family, is Alfred Henry, who was my father's cousin and my first cousin once removed. Alice Elizabeth, his mother, is my great aunt. And the father is Horace Al Alfred. But you'll notice he is Horace's birth up the top and he only actually has one name, so when he adopted Alfred as a second name, I do not know. Most of this family, in fact all of this family is related. Um, Charles and Daniel were brothers. If you click on the printer friendly tab, you get a page that looks like this. The other thing that you can do with it is you can highlight that whole page and paste it into an Excel spreadsheet and save it to your computer. That's something that I've done when I've had a great number of names. If we go for the birth printout, the electronic printout, you will notice from this example, which is Alfred Henry's birth, that I have ringed three lots of additional information that you don't get on a certificate. You get when and when the parents were married, you get who the informant was, and then if there was any additional information on a certificate, that is also on this printout. You don't get that on a birth certificate. 
And if you have a little look at the bottom here, you'll see some numbers, handwritten numbers. 2587 1890. 2587 is the microfiche reference, and 1890 is the year. Just remember those one. This is using the district keys, which the New Zealand Society of Genealogists have now put on their website in the members area. So you do need to be a member to be able to access those. So if you click on to the year 1890, it will bring up the scan of those pages which had been first of all printed. The books that they're printed in are no longer available, but some libraries may have them. And we are looking for the next lowest number to 2587. And you will see that it is in the September quarter. And if we go down the page, you will see that it is in Porongahau. And 2587 is the first number in that district. Porongahau, for those that don't know it, is about 110 kilometres south of Napier in the Hawke's Bay district. If we go to the uh, page which will give us the purchasing, you will see at the top here that we've got the Alfred Henry Alabaster and he's got a registration number of 1897. It is quite different to the microfiche number because what has happened is that the Department of Internal Affairs have renumbered, re-indexed them. It is a totally new transcription, and this number does not relate to the district keys at all. You can find the actual date on the site just by doing a few little things with the num with the dates. So we've got on this birth one, we've got our alabaster as our surname. And we've changed the dates. We've got the search from date the same, the 1st of the 1st, 1890, and the ending date, the 30th of the 6th, 1890. And we've got a response from that that there are no records that match your query terms. So the next thing that I did was I went another quarter of a year, and so I changed the search to date to the 31st, sorry, the 30th of the 9th, 1890, and I submitted that search. And it came back with a result. The next thing I did was I changed it to the 31st of the 8th, 1890, and I still got a result, as you can see at the bottom. And then I went back another month to the 31st of the 7th, 1890. And you continue to do that until you find you the correct date, as you will see in this next one slide. And we already knew that his birth date was the 24th of the 7th, 1890, because we had the, um, the printout. But if you didn't know, this is how you do it. And you can do this on all the events, on the births, the marriages and the deaths. If you're searching for deaths online, what can you find? You can find the full name, the age at death, or the date of birth. You can use the microfiche indexes and the district keys to find the district, just as I explained for the birth indexes. And here we are if we pulled up the death index. There are 38 matches, and I have underlined the death of Alice Elizabeth in 1894, aged 26 years, the death of Horace Alfred Alabaster in 1940, aged 77 years, and the death of Alfred Henry Alabaster in 1967, aged 77 years. And if you see just below Alfred's entry, you'll see some dates of birth rather than the age at death. And then if we go over the page to see the rest of those, you can also note that we can see some other surnames, other family names, and those are of the daughters that were born Alabaster. So we now have some additional information from about 1972.
very useful for us family historians. This is a deaf printout, an electronic printout, and this is the additional information that you'll find on that. The name of the religion, of the minister, and the witness of the burial, and also the informant. Interestingly enough, the informant was her brother-in-law, and he really didn't know where she was born. She was actually born in a place called Tollard Royal, which was about a couple of hundred miles from the Salisbury where he said she was born. But at least it was still in the same uh, county of Wiltshire. Using the district keys, we're looking for the microfiche number 1343 in 1894, and we find that the death occurred in Norswood in 1894, which is correct. Now I talked earlier about Ancestry having transcribed some of those records and you will find in the births they go from 1840 to 1950, that's what they say, although I think that they, are, they actually are only historical and you don't find many of the later ones. And here's an example for Horace Alice Baster and his birth date is 1864. And this gives you the folio number, which is what you need to be able to find the district using the district keys. The marriage indexes, similar, and they give the name of the partners as well, and whether it was a bride or the bridegroom. The death indexes are also there, and they give you the death date as the um, the quarter. But also there is the folio number. Marriages, you'll find the full names of the bride and the full names of the groom. The marriages on microfish, they have them separately listed with brides and grooms. And if the name of the spouse is not known, a search of the other list is required to find a match for the number. There are no district keys available for marriages, but the NZSG has produced another finding aid, which I'll talk about in a moment. The search results under alabaster for the grooms brings up a short list of eight. And our Horace is not listed. However, if we search on the New Zealand marriages, which goes from 1836 and includes some church marriages as well as the registration which started in 1855, then um, we get a different result. And here we have Horace and his spouse is Brewer. And that was his second marriage after the death of Alice. And here it is with the search result from the CD over the top of the DIA's search. So why couldn't we find Horace? If we search on Annie Brewer, here comes Horace, and his name has been misspelt, and it's now it's in the indexes as Habasta rather than Alabaster. It would have taken me so long to have ever discovered that because unfortunately you have to have an exact name in the search field when you are searching in the online indexes. So searching tips for online historical indexes, your searching needs to be precise. You need to put in exact names and exact dates it won't just take a year, you need to put the start date in the form 01 slash 01 slash 1890, as I have done earlier. It doesn't support any sort of fuzzy logic, and so therefore we cannot, we only get returned what we put in. 
The Microfish Index is on Ancestry.com for the same period as historical events. Fortunately, that does accept uh, some, his, some fuzzy logic, so you will often be able to find it on those. If you want to order a certificate that's within the non-historical period, you need in New Zealand to get a real me identity, and this uh, enables you to get your um, certificate easily. A little another word is about white copies. They've been issued for events where sensitive information has been registered, such as a, an adoption or where somebody has been declared illegitimate on the certificate. They're also called typed copies. And this is because legislation was passed that required that this information must be treated as though it was never registered so you never ever will be able to get that information in that printout. The next set of records is the New Zealand Cemetery Records and recently Ancestry.com have, have produced those and a search of the record for Alfred Henry Alabaster gives a birth date and a death date and you can see through to the transcription. You do need to take a note of the record as well as the transcription because that will give you the cemetery and the, um, and the place. It often will give you additional information and in this case we have Alfred's wife and the, what the headstone says but this is not always available. If we look on Annie's, uh, we've got her record and we see that this is the, the burial of her ashes and another, there's another information for that and that's the burial record which is not always um, available. So there are two records there for Annie Alabaster. Another site that's really very useful for finding your people in New Zealand and finding which cemetery they're in is a site called Kiwi Celts. And clicking onto that, you can get the various council websites. And as an example, I've used the one in Fokotani district. And if you click on to that, it shows you the location from the GIS. And clicking further, give you a cemetery search. And all these Melvilles are my family. And very interestingly enough that we have one as the deceased name. And uh, it has the estate of. And one of these <coughs> days I will get and send them and ask them to correct it to Winifred Jesse Melville rather than his her estate. Clicking further on to that, we've got an overview of the actual cemetery, which I found fascinating, especially as this land was actually owned by my Melville family up till the 1940s when it was taken when they straightened the road. Another local council that I clicked onto was the Wairoa District Council and I found this other one really fascinating. Um, they have an overview of their cemetery and they've also got photographs of the headstones along with the map of where the headstone is located and I found that really really interesting and uh, hope it's sort of the ideal one for a lot of cemeteries to follow and give lots of information. Um, the different colours are the purple, have got two people buried in that plot, whereas the, the plain red ones have only got one. And when you click onto one, which is uh, the one that I've got circled, it comes up as a brighter red and then gives you the surrounding information. I thought that was really interesting. Church records. 
So what our church records of available in New Zealand? Well, they were available from when the clergy first arrived and commenced recording baptisms, marriages and burials. The earliest found around 1820, and we must remember that they are private records held by the church. And so therefore, there is different accessibility depending on the religion. If we look first of all at the Anglican Church of Aotearoa, New Zealand, we find that it is divided up into dioceses, and most of the churches are like this. So it's necessary to know whereabouts in New Zealand your people are likely to be. There are a number of um, archives and they're easy to click on to. But also remember that the New Zealand Society of Genealogists has a considerable amount of information in their library and you can go find this by going onto the web page and going to search the library. Uh, if you um, want to look up, the research team are there and they can look up anything in particular for you and if you're in New Zealand you can borrow the books that are borrowable. There's a wealth of information in our library. The Catholic Church has another um, set of archives and they're also in dioceses. So again, it's necessary to know, for you to know whereabouts in New Zealand your people are located in order to get to the right set of records. There are also different religions and they have different archivists and so therefore it's necessary to also to know which branch of the Catholic religion that you're really wanting to search. The Auckland Diocese has a really good web page and they have quite a lot of information available and it's well worth clicking onto that to see what it is. But searching is by contacting the archivist and seeing what's available for your family. But as well as that, the New Zealand Society of Genealogists have in their library the Roman Catholic parishes for the Auckland area. And these give a lot of information and often enough to identify your people. They give you the surname, the given dates, the type of event, the father's given name, the mother's given name. And, but that is only where the information is available. Again, if you would like the research team to look up a, an entry and supply you with that information, our research team can do that. Presbyterian Church, one I'm really excited about because they've got some online databases. You need to click on the top which says find something fast and then you'll see where their archives page is. Click onto the archives page, it gives you some information about the, <coughs> what they hold and clicking onto that gives you some quick links and all the red ones are online searchable information. I've just done a quick search of the marriage registers and this is the type of information available under the marriage registers. And these are within the historical events. So you're not going to find anything that's younger than 80 years for marriages. The Methodist Church have a link to their archives direct from the front page and they list out their districts which is similar to dioceses. Again you need to know the area. The Salvation Army is centrally uh, registered and they hold a lot of information and again, you need to contact the archivist to access that. The Jewish archives, they have a separate page and again, the contact is through the archivist. School records. These records are mostly held at Archives New Zealand regional offices and the regional offices are in Auckland, Wellington, Christchurch and Dunedin. Other school records can be found in local libraries or museums. 
Education in New Zealand, the formal education, began with the Education Act of 1877. Prior to that, the schools were private or church schools. The education in New Zealand is quite complicated and ranges from primary through to university. And there are different methods of um, holding those records right through and it's therefore very useful if you're looking for education records to download the pamphlet from Archives New Zealand which will detail the areas that you're looking for. Here is a map from the research guide and again New Zealand has been split up into different education boards and that is you need to know which education board you need to look under. There are also some educational department reports found into in the A to J's, which is the appendices to the Journal of the House of Representatives, and they're online from 1878 to 1924. You need to click on to the section Education, and Search Facilities will often find things. Um, there are named persons amongst those records, but mostly they're teachers, but in the early days there may be some pupils. New Zealand Society of Genealogists have produced a CD called the Kiwi Index, and school records are on that Kiwi Index. And here's a record for Alfred Al Alabaster, who went to school in Northwood. And if we go to the next one, this is when he changed schools same Alfred Alabaster and he went to Dannebrook South School. And this was in the year 1902 and his last day at school was 1904. So often that gives you a lot of information. It also gives you the address where they were living. They were living in Adelaide Road in Dannebrook. To access this CD you do need to be a member of the New Zealand Society of Genealogists to be able to purchase it. Electoral rolls. We have on microfiche the electoral rolls from 1853 through to 1981. The books from 1982 to 2011 are at the NZSG library and lookups are available for members. We have a CD, the New Zealand Society of Genealogists have produced a CD which details the years 1881, 1893, 1896, 1911 and 1925. As well, the years 1853 to 1881 are on Ancestry.com. The CD, if we have a look at that, it <coughs> gives us some really good information and uh, there wasn't very much for Horace, but I just decided to have a look at Daniel and you'll see a couple of entries for Daniel in Wellington in 1893. Now those are two separate people, but if you look a bit further up the list, you'll see the two entries for Austin Henry in 1911. Now that is actually the same person, <coughs> and what's actually happened is that he appears on two rolls because he moved in between the time that the registration took place. And to um, get further information about that, you really do need to search the microfiche. From Ancestry.com, here's a record of Horace Alabaster in 1890. You need to take the record because that details the district and the province. And it also gives you the um, original entry and we can see here that Horace Alabaster in 1890 had a residential vote and he was living in Porongahau and he was a contractor. The 1938 record on the electoral roll shows that he was in um, Wanganui and it gives his address and he was a dairyman then. So you can find that the electoral rolls will give you the changes of occupation and changes of address. Really useful information to add to your family history. As well as that, there are things like the directories. 
and they go on ancestry <coughs> from 1866 to 1954. And this is a terrible um, rendition of a directory, but this is as it is. In, 18, in 1938, Horace was in Jury Town, and he was a contractor. Probate records. These are available from the government at Archives New Zealand. And if we look up Horace, we find his probate. The Family Search have now um, filmed all those probates, and if you search by region and then drill down and start and click on the probate records, which I have done, you will see that Horace's um, probate is there. The event date is 1951, even though he died in 1940, but it was 1951 before it was probated. And there are some 15 images detailing his will and the affidavits and the stamp duty and all the other things that happen when you get probate. There's nothing remarkable about that, so I haven't shown you it, but it was a really interesting document to get. Our newspapers are available on papers past. The collection covers the years 1839 to 1945, and it includes 92 publications at the moment from all regions in New Zealand. It gives you lots of information about people. Um, you can click on it and search by district if you wish. On the search facilities, the one that I like to click on is make sure that you have a tick in the preview images because when you are searching that um, saves you from having to click onto each image to, because you just get a little preview of what it's about so often you can tell whether you want to look at that image or not. Here's from Horace Alabaster and putting his full name in as Horace Alabaster produced 133 results. Um, one of them was really interesting that I found that he'd had a, um, an accident and he was seriously injured and I could see that immediately so of course I want to have a look at that. Um, so um, that can produce some really good things. So family history is cool. Thank you. Thank you.